A very good morning to everyone. I welcome you all to the session two of the masterclass series. In today's discussion, we are going to speak about incident management and how you can build a highly responsive service desk with Service Desk Plus. So my name is Prem Maheshwaran. I'm a product expert of Service Desk Plus and I have been with Manage Engine for more than eight years. I've been helping many customers around the world to implement ITSM solutions. All right, so before we go into the presentation, I'm going to give you a few tips about the GoToWebinar console. So if you'd like to ask any questions, use the questions section in the GoToWebinar control panel. And also you can make use of the chat section to initiate a chat uh, with our panelists. And all questions will be answered at the end of the webinar. So let me also give you a quick run through of the schedule of the masterclass series. So we have four sessions happening on 3 p.m. AEST, 11 a.m. BST, 11 a.m. CDT, and 11 a.m. PDT. And uh, today is May 29th, and uh, we have the incident management discussion for the on-premises. And for May 30th, we have the incident management for the cloud version of Service Test Plus. The next session is on the 12th of June, and it'll be on hardware asset management. All the sessions will be recorded. The slide deck and the recording will be mailed to all the registered uh, users in a couple of days. All right, so the agenda for today's discussion, we are going to discuss about how you can handle a crisis situation. All right, so th that'll be the first thing. So we'll uh, see how an organization can be prepared with, the, with their service desk to handle a crisis situation. The challenges that will come across uh, when we have to handle a crisis situation and the needs that we uh, you know, require uh, in a tool to handle the crisis situation. And finally, we'll see how you can firefight incidents with Service Desk Plus. And end of the uh, discussion will be a question and answer sessions well, uh, where I'll answer your questions there. Spectre outage. So this is the situation I'd like to speak with you today. So you might have heard about the Spectre vulnerability. It's a hardware vulnerability that affected almost many computers in the world. I think uh, even now we have got a lot of computers having this vulnerability. It is a hardware level vulnerability, which uh, you know has an issue with most of the Intel and AMD manufactured processors and many other manufacturers still have this kind of an issue. So it is a memory leakage issue where you can steal uh, the memory or steal the data from the computer's uh, volatile memory and uh, it can be disclosed outside. So this is a problem situation for many of uh, the organizations across the world because this particular situation requires patching a lot of hardware assets. We may also have to upgrade the operating systems in order to resolve this issue. Even browsers need upgrades. So you have to patch your browser to the latest so that you can be uh, safer from this particular vulnerability. So we discussed about this particular case a lot and we thought it would be ideal for us to use it as an uh, as a, a analogy to study service test plus. So some of the challenges that we have in handling a crisis situation. First things first, delayed notification. Because communication is the key strategy here, so we may have to establish a communication with the stakeholders as well as with our technicians who are available at the point of time. So we may have to assemble a team quickly to react to the situation. So we need to establish communication to both the ends, to the business as well as our in-house technicians. Right. Second, slow to respond. So we generally do not respond fast. And that causes you know, confusion and end users will ring us a lot requesting for updates. Stretch resolution time is a, a, a resultant of this. So delayed notification, slow to respond. And also if you don't have an established uh, knowledge base, Finally, stretch resolution time will be the result. And then finally, uh, there won't be any RCA and corrective actions. Most of the times, uh, you know, we do not initiate root cause analysis once the issue is resolved. So we provide a temporary workaround or we provide a quick patch to fix the issue and don't, we don't initiate a root cause analysis. And that is also a huge issue. All right, so without any further delay, I'm gonna show how you can firefight a mayday with service desk plus. With the help of Service Test Plus and the features available in the product, you can put any crisis situation under control. You can bring everything under control, and then you can effectively use your manpower 
focusing on the key uh, root cause of the issue instead of spending time uh, with the incoming requests all right and also you can initiate a root cause analysis collecting all the incidents and associating the incidents to the problem request work on the problem to analyze and find out uh, narrow down to the root cause and also find a solution a permanent or a temporary solution and resolve it all right i'm going to switch the screen and you can see the enterprise edition of the on premises version of service desk plus so this is the on premises version and today's webinar is with the on premises version tomorrow we have the same topic for discussion for the cloud version of service desk plus as well all right so this is the enterprise edition which has got all the uh, you know idle uh, practices that is available here so you've got incident problem and changes you've got project solution and everything is there all right so requests is where both incidents and problems are listed all right this is where you can see both incidents and problems the first step is that we have to see only the incidents now that is the case i can go to all requests which is a filter scroll down and we can see incidents once i choose incidents i can see only the incidents that are reported to it so these are all the incidents that are reported to the it let me take this one for example it's an infosec incident all right so which is very similar to that of uh, uh, you know specter outage you've got an infosec incident so this is the basic detail of the incident where status impact urgency priority etc are reported now the question which i asked you previously how do you collect the priority most of us said we use a coordinator to set the priority on the request so that is not a good way to do because you are spending most of your coordinator's time uh, to set the priority categorizing the incident and then you know assigning it to a right technician all these can be automated so I'm going to show you how you can set the priority because an issue will have different priority for different users, right? It is always not high priority. It is always not medium priority. It's always not low priority. So based on the situation of usage of an asset, it can become a high priority or a low priority issue. For example, a documentation server fails. So it might be a high priority issue for your engineering team and uh, you know your R&D teams but it will be of a low priority issue for your you know your administration team they will not be effectively using the documentation solution so different teams and different users give different priority for the services that we offer so we have to capture the exact priority of an incident from the end user because only the end user can give us the right priority because uh, if you allow your coordinators to set the priority they always take a call based on the asset type Right, so if it's a printer, they'll classify that as a normal or a low priority incident. All right, so if it is like a server, they always treat it as a high priority incident. Right, so it cannot be like that. All right, printer in the front desk, printer in the HR, printer in the uh, airline industry are very, very important. So if you have a printer in the ticket issuing desk, it is of high priority. So if when it fails, we lo lose a lot of money. All right, so it cannot always go with the form factor of the asset or by the type of the asset Instead, it's based on the usage of the asset. So who can convey the usage very effectively to us? It's our customers. It's our users. So we're going to collect the priority from the end users, but in a different way For which I'm going to show you a feature called priority matrix. I'm going to take you to the admin console admin page of service desk plus All right now here under help desk customizer you can see priority matrix i have built a very simple lean priority matrix that you can even use it for your new organization so impact is in one axis and urgency in the other all right so in the impact section i have four options affects a user affects two or more users affects a department or team affects the organization entire organization and in the urgency, I've got only two options. Affects production, doesn't affect production. It is sample priority matrix that I have built. You can add more as per your uh, you know, requirements. So both impact and urgency are customizable. You can add or remove as per your requirements. And I have created a matrix. So now we are going to publish the impact and urgency to the end users. 
instead of publishing the priority directly, I'm going to collect the impact and urgency. So if a laptop fails, the user can choose affects the user and urgency affects production or doesn't affect production. You can choose affects production and then automatically the priority will be set as medium. All right. So based on the inputs that our end users provide, now the application can automatically set the priority. That way we can collect the right priority or set the right priority on the request without overloading your technicians, right, or your coordinators. So that's how that is the best way to collect priority. So the key strategy here for any crisis situation is to communicate with our technicians and the end users, correct? So for which I'm going to show you two options. The first thing that you have to do is alert all your available technicians, all right? For which we need to know the availability of the technicians first. So if it happens in the midnight, if there is a crisis situation in the midnight or in the end of business hours, we need to know who is available at this point of time to handle the situation. For which you can go to the home page, all right? And in the home page, we have got two options. Right? It's the scheduler option, which will show a calendar. And uh, once you click on the logged in technician, you can see currently logged in technicians. Any technician who is currently available logged into the application. All right. And technician availability chart will show you who are uh, available in the office. So who are on leave, who are available in the office, all that can be seen from the technician overview. Okay. So these two features, technician availability chart and logged in technicians will give you a fair picture of who is available in the office, who are all logged into the application currently. Once you know that, you can now initiate a communication using a feature called broadcast message. Under the communication, click on broadcast message. Now you have two options all technicians and logged in technicians. If you'd like to alert all technicians saying that you've got a crisis situation, I can say Mayday, standby for instructions. All right, so now all the logged in technician, all the technicians will be given a pop-up message. So that way I have communicated the issue to my internal teams. So the next thing that I have to do is also let our end users know about this particular known outage for which you can make use of announcements which is available under my view all right so go to the my view section in the home page there you have got all the announcements so we have already made announcement for the specter outage so to add a new announcement all you have to do is click on add new all right provide an announcement title the content of the announcement the validity of the announcement as well all right, you can choose how long the announcement should be shown in the self-service portal. So when a technique, when the end user tries to log into the self-service portal, the announcement will be shown there. Also as a suggestion, when he goes to report an incident. So that way we effectively communicate this outage to the end user in the self-service portal. But some users won't even log into the self-service portal, correct? So that is where we also have this option to send this announcement as an email. All right, so the same announcement can be sent or distributed to uh, a, an organizational distribution list. So we have communicated in the self-service portal. We have also communicated via email. There is one more option. So if Service Desk Plus is integrated with Desktop Central, right? So you might have heard about Desktop Central is an endpoint management solution where an agent will reside in the end user's PC for software updates and also managing the endpoint. So if the integration is available, we can also display an announcement using the desktop central agent. So that way every end user PC will be given an alert about an ongoing issue. So with these three options, so publishing an announcement in the end user portal, triggering an email, and also sending out a message to the desktop central agents, we can effectively control the inflow of requests. So for known outages, end users, will be uh, you know, sent an awareness message. Uh, they can inform that we have already identified the issue and we have started working on it. Uh, so you can control the inflow of requests. That way you can redirect your manpower to work on the key uh, root cause of the issue. 
right? So this is how I can establish communication. Now, after the incident has been reported, so some of the incidents will be reported to us and we may have to start working on it. So after the incident is reported, now the next step is to start working on the issue. So these are all incidents reported for the same type of issue. We can see uh, it has come from the same user as well as different users. So the first step that we have to do is housekeep the incoming incident, the already reported incidents. Sometimes our users will become impatient they will send duplicate copies of the same incident and report it to us, all right? So first we have to take care of it. If you take a look at here, the uh, user Yasmin has reported the same incident twice. So now we can choose these two incidents and under actions, we have got an option to convert these two into one by merging, all right? Even I can choose the parent request. Once I merge, these two will be taken care of. Similarly, I can see or identify issues reported by the same user multiple times if it is the same issue. So this should be done only when a user reports the same issue multiple times in a short span of time. All right? Then we can merge them and we can reduce the list of incidents. That way we can bring the count under control. So that is the first step. We have, did, we have done that. So the next thing is these incidents, all these incidents are you know, kind of the same issue reported by multiple users. So in that case, we have to uh, you know, somehow link these requests because we cannot distribute these incidents to different engineers and ask them to work simultaneously. That way we will be inefficiently using our resources, our human resources. So we may have to allocate just one engineer, ask him to do research and find out a solution. And the rest of the engineers can wait for an update from the primary ticket owner. So that is where we have got an option to link them together. You can choose all the tickets, go to actions, and you'll find an option to link the requests. I can say same issue. Once linked, all right, now all these incidents are linked together. I can assign one of my senior engineers to work on the primary incident. Right. As you can see here, this incident is associated or linked to another incident. All right, so I can go to the linked incident. So that'll be my parent one. All right, and this particular incident is linked to five other similar issues, and it can be assigned to one of my senior engineers. Right. The advantage of doing this is now, the engineer Santa, who has been assigned with this incident, will start his research, all right? So he'll identify the priority of the issue. He'll start investing his time to analyze the issue. He'll probe the end user. He'll also collect the logs, all other technical information to uh, you know, narrow down the issue. Now, once he starts the research, he'll keep on adding an update in the form of notes, all right? So under actions, you've got an option to add notes so notes are the progress, uh, you know, comments. So any note that he adds will also be shared with all the linked incidents. So that way, all the other engineers who are waiting for an update from the primary ticket owner will be updated via notes. Finally, once the issue resolution is found, the technician go to the can go to the resolution section and can add a resolution. So the resolution that he adds will be updated to all the linked incidents. So this is ideal if the incident can be resolved in the incident level, right? So in, at times, we may have to go beyond it because the level one engineer will try his best. He will search the existing solutions. So there is an option to search the existing solutions right away from the resolution section. I can go to solutions here, search, all the knowledge base articles that I have stored so far, I can even go by a topic search. All right, and I can make use of the existing solution as the resolution. If I have used an article to resolve the issue, I can copy the existing solution to the resolution. All right, so that way I can effectively make use of solutions. So if we have consumed solution, we have solved it. At times we will find new solutions. For example, I'm going to find out a new solution. I've done some research 
uh, in the internet. I have found few articles. I applied the articles and the issue got resolved. But this content is not available in my local knowledge base. If that is the case, you don't have to allocate a separate engineer or an author to create new solution articles and enrich your existing database. Instead, I can update a resolution. So I'm going to do a test. Now this can go into the solutions as well. All right, so that way I can communicate uh, and uh, my linked request and also add this existing resolution into the solutions as well. So two-way communication is possible, two-way updation is possible. We can cons consume the solution as well as new resolutions that we add can be added into the knowledge base after moderation. We can even set up a moderation where technicians will be uh, you know, scrutinized all right, for the solution articles that they have added. Uh, we can send it to a level three engineer for review and then uh, the senior engineer can add it to the solutions database. So we even have a moderation system uh, so that we can create a clean list of solutions in your knowledge base. All right. So now we have linked the requests. We have also started working on the request. So you can send to and fro uh, uh, responses to the end user, receive communication, all that conversations via email can be linked and showed here. So that is an advantage. So if at all you haven't any, if you have any doubts or clarifications, you can always go to the email and check what the end user has responded. The properties of the request, like the priority category, subcategory, and item, which is configurable under the admin section. You can go to the admin section and set up category, subcategory, and item, which is completely customizable. All right, department to uh, from which it is originated, uh, the due by time. So it is one of the important things. A due by time is always configured by the SLA, set by the SLA. So let us quickly see how you can configure an SLA. All right, so under the admin section, go to service level agreements. So we already have discussed about it in the previous session. Uh, anyways, I'll quickly show you this. All right, service level agreements. Here I can set up the response and resolution due by times for any SLA. And most of the times SLA will be automatically set on the request based on the priority. If priority is set as high by the priority matrix. So we collect impact and urgency from the end user and priority matrix will automatically set the priority as high. Once it is set, automatically the SLA will be applied. So it's like a domino effect, right? Uh, you know, automation is set in two layers. So it'll automatically set the, prior, uh, the SLA, which sets the response and resolution due by times, which is configured in the SLA. All right, so we have captured the SLA, all right? So all these are the properties, and we can also move the request in an organized fashion, all right? So if you see the transitions here, I believe you are in the latest build, and there is an option to configure the flow of the request. For example, if it is a high priority request and you would like to uh, your technicians to follow an organized way of executing things all right the flow can be configured as well which is done with the admin section all right go for a search for lifecycle request lifecycle is a new addition to service test plus so this is where i can configure the flow of request all right so i have created one for security issues so open security issues, let me quickly open it. All right, so this diagram represents the flow of an incident from start to end. All right, all these are statuses that I have built. So these are custom statuses. As per your organizational requirements, you can create custom statuses. All right, so all statuses will be shown in a rectangle. All right, and these are called as transitions. So generally, when a ticket is assigned to a level one engineer, it'll be in open state, right? From the open state, the engineer will choose to move the request to the next statuses. In a conventional method, he'll be listed with all the statuses. He can move to on, on hold, can, he can move to uh, in, in progress, he can even resolve and close directly from the open state without following any process uh, you know, that you have created. Now, with request lifecycle, you can direct your technician to follow the process. 
So uh, as I hover the mouse over the open status, it shows two possible, two possible transitions to the technician. Either he can place the request on hold or assign it to a technician. All right. Once it is moved to assign status, he can he is given only one option. He can never go back to the on hold status. From assign, he can only start the work and move to in progress status. From in progress status, you have got, he has got two options. From in progress, he can either move the request on hold or resolve the request. This kind of organized flow of request is made possible with a request lifecycle. All right, that will assist technicians to quickly follow the process, stick to the process, and you know guide the ticket to follow the workflow. So to build the workflow, all you have to do is you know drag and drop the statuses. So if you'd like to bring a status in between, you can do that. You can even configure the flow using the flow chart and also add a transition just like this. So once you do that, under the transition, you can perform three operations, uh, means actions in three events. So before the transition is done, when the request is in open state, I can restrict this particular status to only select technician. For example, when the request is in open state, on hold status should be given only to my level two engineers. If that is the case, uh, I can choose the group members and ticket owners. So only the ticket owner can move the request from open to on hold. The rest of the engineers will not get this option. All right, no other engineer can go and move the request from open to on hold. All right, during the transition, when I'm performing the operation, if I'd like to collect mandatory information like request type or priority, etc. So now when he tries to move the request from open to on hold, I can collect or make certain fields mandatory. So contextual information collection is possible, all right? So I can also set some optional fields and also add a rule, all right? This rule, I'm gonna name it as trigger alert. And in the actions, I've got two options, execute script and negate. So I can choose to execute a script to alert other application. For example, if I'm gonna raise a bug and I want to create a record in Jira, I can make use of the script, do an API call to communicate with the third party application. If I want to alert my monitoring solution, uh, any third party monitoring solution, I can write a script, invoke APIs, and communicate to third party application, All right? That is one more case. I don't want my technicians moving requests to on hold status for my VIP users. So I'm gonna create a separate role for VIP users. All right, and the action is going to be negate. All right, and also I'm gonna set a criteria. So I don't want the on hold operation to be canceled for all users. I want to allow my technician to uh, move the request to on hold for a general user, but if it is a VIP user, then negate the operation of on hold. I can even add a reason, all right, something like this. It is your boss, better proceed with your work, don't put it on hold. So sometimes our technicians will be unnecessarily placing the request on hold just to you know, buy, some time, buy some time, so we can avoid that, all right? So if it is a VIP user, we can negate the operation of on hold, the technician can never move the request to on hold. All right, for the rest of the users, you can place it on hold. Uh, similarly, for any other custom status that you build, it can be added into the uh, request lifecycle and you can perform similar operations just, just like that. Right? So that is during the event and after the event. So once the request is moved from open to on hold, in that event, I can once again trigger you know, scripts All right? and also add an email notification. All right? So this is a different email notification. Generally, if you'd like to trigger a notification for a specific status change, it was not possible in the previous versions. But with the request lifecycle, now I can trigger the notification when a request is put on hold. And who can I notify? Anyone that is there in the organizational roles. All right, so you can consume organizational roles. If you'd like to learn more about organizational roles, uh, please watch the previous webinar 
uh, in the masterclass series, the session one webinar, we have discussed a lot about organizational roles. All right, you can consume the organizational roles to trigger the notification and also anyone who takes part in the request. So dependent request owners, all right? So if you have request dependencies, which is built uh, with the parent and child relationship, I can trigger notifications to all the dependent owners when the request is placed on hold. I can trigger notification to the editors in case of, uh, you know, service requests, group members, all right? So if a technician is part of the network support group, I can alert all the technicians whenever a request is placed on hold. This will be very useful in case of crisis situation. Uh, if you have a custom status which denotes mayday situations, all right? So if you've got red alert as one of uh, your statuses, as soon as the request is placed on red alert status, we can now trigger a notification to all the group members. All right, link ticket owners can be notified. Link to request owners can be notified. All right, so all that can be done with the notification option available in request lifecycle. This gives you fluidity to configure the flow of the ticket, uh, you know, restrict technician from uh, moving unnecessary statuses. Also gives you option to alert via scripts to third party application and notification emails that can be sent to organizational roles and anyone who takes part in the request. All right, so that is how we can configure the transitions here. All right, so now in a crisis situation, when you have completely exhausted your knowledge base, you have tried your best, you have searched the complete knowledge base, you still can't find out a solution. In that case, we can trigger a problem request right from the incident. Right, so problem is where we initiate root cause analysis to find out new solutions, fix uh, fixes as well as workarounds. To create a new problem, go to the associate problem section, click on search if you'd like to associate to an existing problem. If you already know that there is a problem available, you can quickly do a search from here. It'll list all the open problems with the reported incidents category. All right. So you've got three already. Or if you'd like to go with a new problem, click on new. So that will give you a problem report form. And information about the incident will be already copied to this problem ticket. All right, so I'm gonna do associate it to an existing problem for this demonstration. Once I do that, this request is associated to a problem. Let us go to the problem ticket. So in the problem request, we have got the description of the issue already copied from the incident. Now we can also associate the affected services. So if you have defined services, you can associate the affected services and also the assets involved with this issue. So let us assume you have got a list of assets enabling a service. Let us see how you can find out the impact and assign it to the problem. Because uh, when a particular service fails for the first time, we'll not know what priority to be given for uh, to be given for the issue. So we need to get a bird's eye view of all the assets. So in the case of Spectre issue, we need to get a, a quick view of all the critical assets. So that is where CMDB will come in handy. Configuration Management Database. Here under CMDB, we can create different views for different services that are offered by IT. So all these are called as business views. For critical services, I have created views and all the associated assets can be viewed here. I can quickly do a, an expand for a particular service. In this case, email is down. I can see all the interlinked assets which enable this particular service. All right, here, when I click on it, it will show all the associated problems and incidents that are currently available for this view. So with this, we can quickly identify or get a bird's eye view of all the interlinked assets and it will help us during the root cause analysis. 
when we check multiple points of failures uh, in a possible points of failures so we can uh, you know go with this particular map and check all the path in which the data flows all right so this is the submission form in which we have associated the services affected also involved all the assets that are part of this particular issue the next step is to initiate root cause analysis in the root cause analysis we have got three sections the first section is to record the symptoms so whenever an issue happens we have to record the symptom that is the first thing right once the symptom is recorded the next step is to initiate an impact analysis which we can do with the business views and configuration management database right that way that, that is where we can store the relationship between a primary asset and all the other assets in your infrastructure so that will give us a bird's eye view of how the configuration works to deliver a particular service so with that we can initiate an impact analysis all this can be delegated to different technicians making use of the tasks the task is the work breakdown structure here i can add multiple tasks uh, you know associate or delegate it to technician ask them to check multiple points of failure that way we can have good control with our human resources so our human resource can be delegated to check multiple points of failures at the same time which can save us a lot of time all right so finally once you narrow down to the root cause the root cause can then be recorded here once the root cause is identified then you can check for workarounds or solutions if you have an existing solution already provided by uh, the OEM or if you find it in the internet uh, you can add it as a solution which gets added into the solutions database or if there is no workaround available I mean solid permanent solution available and if you have got a temporary fix it can be added under the workaround section sometimes you will not have solutions as well as you will not have any workaround all right so it might be a bug and you have to live with it for a certain amount of time in that case you can go under action and mark it as a known error all right and also make an announcement directly from the solution to the entire organization so these are the options available under the problem management module now if you can see there are 21 incidents associated to this problem now once you find a solution you don't have to manually uh, you know inform all the technicians of the 21 tickets about this particular solution instead you can do it in one shot i want to show you how to do that so under the action click on close problem now that will give you a visit in this visit you have got four options you can choose to copy the problem solution and workaround to all the associated incidents so the problem solution is now copied to the resolution of all the 21 incidents the second option is to email technicians working on the incidents associated with this problem so all the incident owners will also be alerted via email that the solution has been found and it has been copied to your resolution so sometimes the technician have to manually uh, you know apply the solution in the end users systems but at times we may have distributed or you know deployed a common solution uh, it might be a patch, it might be a, a KB upgrade in the operating system that would have already taken care of the issue. In that case, I can choose third option, close all the associated incidents at once. So once I close the problem, all the associated incidents uh, will be copied with the solution, a email will be sent to the technician and also it will be closed. Uh, you know. And finally, I can even email all the affected users about this problem. Right. I can inform all the affected users that it has been taken care of and we have resolved and then I can close the problem directly from here. So I get these four options from the problem request. That way I can quickly close the problem directly. Right. All these are options that will allow you to bring the request volume under control when there is a crisis situation. You can alert your technical team, you can alert your business, right. you can do some housekeeping tasks like merging the request linking the request you can guide your technicians to follow a path making use of request life cycle we can trigger notification contextual notification to certain users uh, in the organizational roles and also users who are part of the ticket making use of the request life cycle we can even trigger alerts to third party systems like monitoring solutions or you know bug tracking solutions making use of the scripts in the request lifecycle 
then with linking the tickets we can share the notes and res resolution amongst the other technician a parent ticket owner can share the resolution you can effectively consume solutions from the knowledge base and as and when you find new solution it can also be updated into the knowledge base when you completely run out of solution you do not know what to do that is when you initiate a problem request so with the problem request you can associate all the associated incidents initiate a root cause analysis bring in the affected assets from configuration management database make use of business views to do an impact analysis record the symptoms once you identify the root cause then find out a workaround or solution if you don't have a workaround or solution mark it as a known error and finally once the problem is completely resolved from the closure uh, visit you can choose to perform a lot of operations so all these are options available in service test plus with which you can seamlessly control uh, the volume of the tickets as well as handle a crisis situation by knowing the availability of the technicians from the availability chart finally to improvise and measure uh, you can make use of the reports so in the report section you have got a lot of reports available for incident request which is available out of the box all right if you'd like to know the request status by priority all you have to do is click on it it will automatically generate a report and give you the data so similarly you've got a lot of reports available for the incident requests but if you'd like to build a custom report you can always go to new custom report all right choose the type of the report that you'd like to generate choose the module in this case it's going to be incident request proceed to the report visit here i can choose all the columns that i need in my report right set up the filter options you'd like to apply a date filter a range for the data you can do that and you can go by advanced filtering if you'd like to generate a report for a particular group or a technician i can choose and uh, filter it and then also i can create chart i can choose to build a chart out of this report so all these are options available to run reports and finally you can also build custom dashboards for example in this case specter outage it's going to be a long outage so specter issue is going to be there for a very long time and if you'd like to track the progress of the specter outage i can now build dashboards custom dashboards so go to the dashboard section here for the help desk module so we have got a dashboard for the technicians task request summary etc in addition to this i can also build custom dashboards for a specific issue i'm going to call it a specter dashboard so if you already have created a, a report a custom report the reports will be shown here all right so how to bring a custom report to this dashboard is what i'm going to show now so you can also invoke external widgets so if there are any feeds about specter outage in the internet and if you'd like to show it in the dashboard i can do that publish the dashboard to a certain users save so now i have created a custom dashboard for this particular outage so if i if i'd like to add more reports to this dashboard all i have to do is go to the report section create a custom report choose the available columns now apply some filter chart i'm going to go with a, a pie chart run the report so now we've got a report now i have to save this report so i'm going to save it as specter and it's going under compliance and security save it now i have created a report with a chart for a particular issue now i can go back to the reports home all right under compliance and security i'll find the newly created report run it again and when i do that i'll get an option to add this report to the dashboard you can click on add to dashboard choose the dashboard save now if i go back to the dashboard i'll find this particular report available there uh, my apologies there might be a glitch but the idea is once a, a report with the chart is saved and it is run again it can be added to the dashboard and you can build a custom dashboard out of it 
So some of the best practices that I would like to share uh, for managing incidents, make use of business rules. So business rules can help you automatically route the request to the right technician based on the context of the uh, subject, the content of the subject and the description. You can find out keywords and uh, you can write a rule to automatically route the, uh, the request to a particular technician. So if it's a printer request, it can fall into the printer group. Or if it is a network issue, it can fall into the network group. And that kind of rules can be created for automation. Uh, make use of knowledge base. Knowledge base will help you find quicker resolutions and you know, stick to SLA. Self-service portal, you can make use of self-service portal, publish it to the end users. That way, announcements that you make will be evident there. And even the application will suggest you not to uh, raise an incident when there is an ongoing issue. Service level agreements will help you set the priority uh, that has to be given in the form of deadlines. So you can set the resolution and response due by times. Notification rules as well as request lifecycle will help you to trigger notification at various events and also contextual notification whenever there is a status change. So automatically ticket can be closure with the help of problem requests. All right. So when a problem is closed, you can close all the associated incidents. And also reports can be used to run, uh, you know, identify backlogs and effectively close in the future. All right, some of the matrices that I would like to share. So if you'd like to measure the team performance, uh, run reports on incident response time, first call resolution rate, average resolution time, and ticket backlogs. So if you'd like to find the compliance, uh, you know, run SLA compliance ratio, incidents not initiated via self-service, incidents resolved remotely. All these are compliance reports. For the quality, we have got few reports, as well as for the value, we have got few reports. So the next masterclass for the on-premises is on the topic of hardware asset management, bringing all your assets under one roof. And it's going to happen on the 12th of June in four time zones, 3 p.m. AST, 11 a.m. BST, CDT, and PDT. Thank you so much, guys. Have a good one.